and welcome to Talk RX with Dr. Neha. This week, uh, my wonderful guest is Phil, and he's an optometrist, and he's been thinking about communication and what questions he might have. So thank you for joining us, Phil. It's a pleasure. Yes. Somewhat of a pleasure. <laughs> you a little nervous? <laughs> a little. A little bit. And how do you know that in your body? Does, um, what's your physical intelligence telling you? Well, I'm, you feel? I have to face new patients every moment of the day. And mm -hmm. I'm also um, a lay preacher, so I've had to stand in front of audiences and mm. take funerals and oh, wow. weddings and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I know what I'm feeling. And so tell me the dry physically. Mouth, dry mouth. Slightly damp palms. Aha, uh -huh, slightly damp palms. So this is a little uncomfortable for you. A little. Yeah. Well, thank you. But for... you're easy on the eyes, so <laughs> that makes it less well, uncomfortable. Listen, I'll I'll take it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So tell me, in communication, uh, it sounds like not only are you a healer and uh, someone who works with patients a lot, and um, also is comfortable with the expression of deep emotion, right? Um, Tell me where sometimes you feel challenged. I feel challenged when I uh, return to the house and, uh -huh. uh, after a long day in the office. Yep. And, and you're an optometrist. That's right. Yep. In my optometrist uh, capacity, I come home and uh, I've talked all day. Yeah. And my wife sometimes hasn't because sometimes she works on the computer most of the day. Yep. Or um, in her... Um, design studio mm -hmm. and she wants to talk yeah she wants to communicate and right the last thing on my mind is communication mm -hmm. and she feels sometimes that the silence is passive aggressive and that mm -hmm. uh, something's going on right and she loves to probe <laughs> and i don't like to be probed <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I understand why you have such cool glasses. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, and the second piece is, it sounds like during the day with your clients, you're really um, doing much more than helping them with their vision. I hope so. You are, it's like what, what takes a clinician and turns them into a healer, mm -hmm. right? Right. That, that amazing depth and capacity to listen and to also engage them. Right? Um, and then it sounds like you feel spent by the time you're home and you're done. Okay? Now, how long have you been married? 43 years. <laughs> One would say you're quite seasoned at this. <laughs> there's, right? no, there's no gut in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this capacity, tell me why you really uh, have trouble talking at home. Because you're a talker, you enjoy it, it, you made it your profession. Tell me what's different when you come home. I find it difficult, possibly because of my upbringing. Okay. That's a great place to start. Being a pastor's kid mm -hmm. and hearing all the things that the pastor has to deal with yep. over the phone and having to keep quiet about it and just forget about it and move mm -hmm. on. Uh, I think that's something to do with it. Also, being a Yorkshireman is part of it, too. <laughs> we don't say much, you know, back in Yorkshire. We tend to I keep... love your accent, though. There I would you love go. you to talk all the time. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't understand much of what I said <laughs> if I spoke in my Yorkshire diction. But um, there's some of that in it, too. Yeah. And maybe just laziness. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of that, if I'm honest with myself. Yeah. And I have to delve and think. Yeah. It's like it can be a little draining. Absolutely. Right? All right. So there's, there's a few differences here. There is keeping confidences of other people. Okay. So when, so when your father's a pastor or you're, you're in that capacity, there's other people's troubles that they share that you keep confidence. Right. When you are the one in charge at your office and all your patients are coming through, you are the one in control, and it is all of their troubles. Now when you come home, saying that you're all talked out, now let me tell you why it doesn't add up, okay? It doesn't add up because she doesn't actually want to hear about everybody else's troubles. She wants to know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
And to you, that feels d more challenging, more difficult, you know, harder, more energy consuming, right? But your primary relationship, which obviously family is important to you. Very. Right? Very important to you. Um, is it important to you that your wife feels connected to you? Oh, absolutely. Right? It is. And it's just that in your work capacity, it's easier for you. Mm -hmm. Right? And then when you come home, it's you use the excuse, like you said, maybe I'm lazy. I don't really think of a man like you as lazy. Because you've worked hard, you have a business, you you know go to work every day, you, you are a worker. It's just that some things might come a little bit easier to you than other things. And the emotional realm for many men is around, and women, is a much more ambiguous and difficult uh, realm to navigate. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you're listening to your patients? How do you, how do you navigate it? Because a lot of the times what they're telling you is emotional. I find it much easier for some reason mm -hmm. to, um, to listen to them and to show compassion towards them. And uh, it's just part of being a doctor. And I think it's a big part that's lost because a lot of the time we spend t tapping away at computers mm -hmm. in the patient's presence. I don't right. do that. I I'm still work present. on paper Yeah. because I want to be present with them. Yep. And the other thing is I'm useless on the computer. <laughs> to be quite I love honest. your honesty. And so, um, but that's how I feel. And yeah. it really does draw you away from the patient right. to be using um, electronic records. Yeah, absolutely. However, I just find it comes naturally to me. I just, mm -hmm. there's always something deeper than the eye problem. Always. Uh, yeah. Uh, they can't see in some realm of their life. It shows up as a problem in their eye, mm -hmm. but it's a much deeper meaning. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to ask you, what is it that you can't see in your life? Mm, that's a good question. Much more difficult. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And just notice. Notice if this is that moment that your body said dry mouth, palm sweating, like, really? It's so much easier to talk about someone else's problems than it is to acknowledge what I can't see. Yeah, you put your finger on it. <laughs> and you don't have to have the answer this moment. I right? don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. If you're willing to go into the unknown and sit in the discomfort of not knowing and saying, you know what? I just felt my mouth get dry and my palms get sweaty and I'm used to being in control, having the answer and being able to do what I do well. And right now I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is all anyone who loves you wants to hear because it's the truth. And then they may want to say, well, let's learn, like, let's start helping you get a language around what's happening for you. Uh, I'd love it if we communicated more, right? And you might be thinking, oh gosh, I don't want to communicate anymore. But the truth is you've just identified an area that might not be as strong for you as other areas. That's mm -hmm. all. That's right. Right? And because you value family so much and you value connection so much, you want to ask yourself, is there a way that I work a lot? And I don't know this, I'm just going to ask you. Is there a way I work a lot because I get the reward and I feel valued there? So much so that by the time I come home, I don't have energy to explore communication or connection, right? And in the name of providing and helping with support the family and whatever you're doing, right, you get to kind of hide a little bit from that. And is that like the laziness piece you were talking about? That's like, it. That's it. So I just love your honesty and your ease because I know as a physician myself, there's, I have gotten pretty comfortable in the spaces at which I'm good and staying in that zone, right? And I don't particularly do well in the awkward, I'm not really sure what the answer, I never say I don't know. That's not our job, we're paid to say we, we have the know. answer. <laughs> Even sometimes when we don't, right? right? And I just find it so refreshing to be with a colleague who really is, you trust yourself enough, you're brave enough, 
and you're willing to show up and be an example for other people. So thank you so much. Feel the uh, warmth of the hand? I do, I do. <laughs> and you're as cool as a cucumber. Yes, well, listen, we're in my zone, mm -hmm. right? This is where I get to be asking the questions and I get to do what has become over the years more comfortable and loving for me. So right. I trust me, you get me in your office and I'll be a little less comfortable. <laughs> thank you. So for any of you, out there that know that there's one arena of your life that works pretty well and you sometimes overuse and overwork that muscle to avoid showing up in another arena that you value very much there's a there's a short-term and long-term uh, repercussion for choosing the avoidance if you avoid dealing with one area of your life and you invest a lot of energy in the other that area over time will not be satisfied, whether it's with your partner and the ability to communicate in your family. Um, and you will continue, right, taking the short term, what I call the short term high to avoid um, this experience of dealing with something that might have a short term dip or discomfort, right? So you want to ask yourself, do you want to feel the pain, right? So you've been married for 43 years. Do you want to feel the death by paper cut experience for 43 years of someone telling you that you don't communicate with them and they want your connection? Or would you like to spend a, just a little bit of time, right, dipping into that discomfort to have the long-term high of connection, uh, love, and just feeling really satisfied in all areas of your life? So, I, it starts with honesty, and it starts with saying, hey, I'm not really sure about that right now. And for that, I honor you. Thank you. So ask yourself, what, what part of your life have you been avoiding, and what part have you been hesitant to say, I don't know? So I'd love to hear your comments uh, and your experiences. What arena is that in your life? And I'd also love it if you drop me a tweet at hashtag Ask Dr. Neha, A-S-K-D-O-C-T-O-R-N-E-H-A. And until next week, stay true and stay curious. <laughs>